Hey, how's it going? Well, that's just awesome. I just have some opinions to get off my chest. This is a tale of two dogs and the attitude of the people who run them. So just to do a quick recap, about a year ago, Dan Worrell made a video about the Harrison 32C channel strip plugin, where he debunked the company's claim that, and I quote, every resistor, capacitor, and transistor is included in the model by showing two simple facts. Firstly, that the EQ cramps at Nyquist, something that only happens in digital EQs. And secondly, that there is no non-linearity in the plugin as the gain increases. In response to that, Someone from Harrison Consoles made a comment on Dan Worrell's video, doubling down on these claims, very condescendingly I might add, which prompted Dan Worrell to take the gloves off and tear Harrison a second brand new 2022 asshole in a subsequent video. About a week ago, YouTuber Lonely Rocker brought in two representatives from Harrison to share their side of the story on his platform. Now, I'm not a DSP specialist, as the people representing Harrison in the Lonely Rocker video inexplicably aren't. I won't be getting too much into the science of it all. If you're interested in that, there's an awesome video by my buddy Leandro Facchinetti, where he gets really into the weeds of all this stuff. And I will link that below if you really want to nerd out on the science part of this. I simply want to take the position of an audio software consumer and share some of my opinions about some of the comments and the overall attitude that Harrison has employed in regards to this controversy. And later I'll be comparing that to another company who once faced similar criticisms. So first of all, in the video, the Lonely Rocker makes the frankly hilarious claim that Dan Worrell is hiding behind his videos and that if he has something valuable to say, he should show his face. Now, I don't want to spend too much time on this part because it's frankly just too ridiculous. I mean, by this logic, Dante is hiding behind his book Inferno because he's an author from the 14th century before technology existed to show your face on any sort of platform. He also says that real mixing is about using your ears and not using scopes. And that one is frankly a bit of a red flag to me. Especially in this day and age, I think we're all growing frankly allergic to people who question the validity of mathematics and science. The point of using scopes or plugin doctor isn't to do so as a replacement for actually listening to stuff when you mix. One of the reasons Dan Worrell stands out in a sea of plugin reviewers is that he removes any trace of subjectivity by using these tools instead of relying on his ears. His demonstration are objective and replicable, and these things are the basic components of a sound scientific experiment. No pun intended. Look man, using your ears is great and everything. They just don't make for a good apparatus of measurement in a valid scientific experiment. As much as I like my ears, I don't trust my ears, and I definitely won't ever ask you to trust my ears. We all got the ears that we got, and most of us are acutely aware of the fact that what we hear isn't the objective truth. If you think yours does, well, frankly, I really don't know how to respond to that, except to say that your arrogance is bordering that of an anti-vaxxer who passed high school biology with a D minus and is now questioning the bona fide expertise of real scientists. But above and beyond all of that, what really rubs me the wrong way is how the representatives from Harrison are constantly trying to derail this conversation, all the while leaving the core complaints that Dan Worrell made completely unaddressed. They try to tell you that cramping is barely audible and that for high frequencies, you should be using a high shelf anyway, which if your filters cramp, every type of filter cramps, or that they didn't know about the cramping, but just left it unaddressed to save consumers some CPU, which is a claim that my buddy Leandro debunks in his video. But none of these really addresses the fact that their marketing is misleading at worst and hyperbole at best. While I agree that cramping isn't a real issue in most real life cases, and that non-linearities can be introduced in other ways, this was never really the core of the argument. These were just things Dan Worrell used as examples of why the 32C channel strip plugin isn't as faithful of a clone of the original rack unit as Harrison's marketing team wants you to believe. A claim that stays on their website to this day and that I've never seen them address in any way. So not only are all the talks about cramping missing the actual issue or distracting from it intentionally, it just feels a little bit condescending to me. Like instead of admitting that you use the exaggeration as a marketing tool, which you could argue almost every plugin manufacturer does anyway, you instead say stuff like, oh, well, none of you idiots hear cramping anyway, so who are we hurting? It's showbiz, baby. Do I really need to spell out why that's problematic? It's pretty much capitalism 101 that you shouldn't be implying that your core customers are idiots. 
So let's say I made a spice rub and claimed that it's the exact replica of the spice rub Gordon Ramsay uses in his restaurants. Then one day a chemist comes along, takes my spice rub to their lab and concludes that my spice rub isn't an exact replica as it lacks any trace of saffron. What I can't do then is to come out and say, ah, well, saffron is a subtle note anyway. Most people don't really taste it. And then also go on to say that no chef worth a fuck would ever take a spice rub into a lab that they would use their palate and whatnot. Because then I'd be offending my customers by saying that their palates aren't sophisticated enough to taste the difference between a spice rub that doesn't have saffron and one that indeed does. All the while seeking to invalidate chemistry as a form of scientific analysis. You see where I'm going with this? So if Harrison reps, instead of dancing around the subject and trying to derail the conversation and name dropping producers who use the original rack unit, simply came out and said, yep, you're right. We were a bit heavy handed with our marketing. We'll try to address the cramping. Then, uh, then uh, that would have been that. But by handling it the way they did, they just revealed their true character and attitude. I myself, I'm a digital boy through and through. I have very little nostalgia towards analog gear. And I'm very aware that what separates me from legendary producers isn't the type of gear that I use. So Harrison's core selling points were of little effect to me to begin with, but seeing how they handled all of this is really the reason why I will be never buying any of their stuff. Anyway, now onto the comparison, because as we all know, Harrison wasn't the first company to face criticism from a Dan Worrell video. In 2021, he made another video where he correctly identified that the ratio controls in Reaper's 1175 compressor are more than a bit off. He then even went into the code of the JSFX plugin and identified the value which seems to be causing this issue. And then he fixed it. So what did Justin Franco, the creator of Reaper do? Did he begin to shit talk Dan Worrell? Mm. Did he claim that anyone who didn't hear the ratios being off is an idiot? Mm. Did he start making excuses like, oh, well, you dial in ratios by ear anyway, right? Mm. No, he didn't do any of that. What he did was immediately fix the issue, release the fix in the new update, and he even made a blog post where he called himself an idiot. Let's not even mention the fact that Reaper doesn't do ads, they don't make exaggerated claims, and they're not in the business of name dropping successful users of Reaper as a way of silencing those of us who don't have Grammys on our shelves. And I don't think anybody thought any less of Kakos and Reaper because of the fact that they made that mistake way back. That interaction overall bought me a lot more respect for Kakos and Reaper. It showed me a company that I would gladly throw money at because in those very rare moments that they do make public statements, they have always shown a lot of class and humility and openness, none of which I can say I have ever seen anybody from Harrison demonstrate. On the other hand, as much as I'm sure that the Harrison 32C plugin, despite its cramping, is a fine plugin in most cases, I would never use it because I'm not really impressed by the fact that it's been used in old records, not nostalgic by its bold claims of transistor by transistor cloning. And I'm definitely super turned off by how they handled this entire debacle. I did find their faces hilarious as the lonely rocker was going off about Dan World not showing his face, as it happens to be the face that I have to make every day at work when a client is just being out of their mind, but I'm contractually obligated to smile and nod as if what they say makes sense. Beyond that, they just don't seem like people who I want to be a customer of. And I think as a company with considerable legacy, it's time for them to look inwards instead of trying to point the finger at Dan Worrell or their users for trying to drag their name through the mud. The fact is, it wasn't Dan Worrell's video that made me swear off Harrison products. They managed to do that all on their own. All right, that's about it. As you can see, this is my face. So I'm looking forward to how you will invalidate my comments here. You'll probably attack me for not having Grammys or maybe because I only have 6,000 subscribers. So what the fuck do I know? But before you do any of that, really ask yourself if it's me you're attacking or if it's your own flawed, science denying boomer character that you're revealing to the whole world. Okay, okay.